Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Mathly MCAT series. In this video, we're going to be talking about percent differences and reciprocals. So we're going to get a little twofer here. So as always, go ahead, pause this video, try out this question on your own, and then we'll work through it together. All right, so this is asking about wavelength of light. And they're asking, hey, if the wavelength of a given laser is increased by 50%, what would be the change in energy? So there's a couple pieces we're going to need to put these concepts together to answer this question correctly. The first is the equation. So remember, our energy of a photon is e equals hf. This is one of the biggest, most important equations you're going to see on test day. And another important equation is that the speed of light is equal to frequency times wavelength. So we can combine these two equations together by uh, isolating for frequency here, and then plugging in wavelength and speed of light for frequency on this equation. So that rearranges to uh, Planck's constant multiplied by speed of light over wavelength or lambda. So right off the bat, guys, we can start by eliminating an answer choice because we can see that we have a reciprocal relationship between wavelength and uh, energy, right? As wavelength increases, energy will decrease. That's what this kind of one over means. So we can eliminate right off the bat a, a direct relationship, right? Like D. That's always a nice thing to do is check your relationships first. Sometimes that can get you all the way to the answer. But now we have to recognize, and this is important, 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 a reciprocal relationship where it says um, y equals 1 over x, this kind of relationship is not a linear one. All right, if we were to put this on a graph, the graph would kind of look like this, all right? It's not going to look linear, which means that we can't just do a linear change. If we're increasing by 50, we decrease by 50 for energy. So I'm gonna tell you that B is also incorrect, but now we're gonna walk through why. So for this question, I want us to consider Planck's constant and um, the speed of light to be constants because that's true on test day. So let's not worry about them. I'm just gonna relabel them as one for right now because they're not relevant to our relationship here, right? They'll be the same in both cases because we're looking for a change. And now let's talk about what does an increase by 50% mean? Well, what it means is that we had our original amount, x, right? And then we increase that by half as much as it already was. So if we do this multiplication-wise, that would make this 1.5 times x, right? Because that gets what we originally had plus another half. So whenever you see a 50% increase, right, or a, um, that kind of discussion on the MCAT, I want you to think, okay, that means I'm multiplying this value, the original value, by 1.5 to get the new value, all right? So that means that our wavelength is, our new wavelength is 1.5 of our original wavelength lambda here. So now let's go ahead and plug that into our equation with substituting uh, Planck's constant and the speed of light is just one for right now as a placeholder. All right, so we've got one over 1.5 lambda. All right, so how do we resolve this to solve for energy? Well, we have to, do our reciprocal math, right? So we have to do 1 over 1.5. So what is 1 over 1.5? That's kind of tricky. So I'm going to turn 1.5 into a fraction. So I'm going to go 1 over 3 halves, right? Because 1.5 is the same as saying 3 halves. This is 1 over 1. And when you're dividing by fractions, what you can also do is flip it up, right? And multiply by the reciprocal. So now we just have 2 thirds. So that is going to be the change in energy, right? So it's going to be two-thirds energy. Now, this could be the answer if that's how they gave it to us, but they didn't, right? They gave it to us in a percentage uh, decrease or increase. So now here's where it gets a little tricky. It's very tempting to pick C here, right? Two-thirds, that means 67, 67% decrease. But now I want you to think about this again. If our original energy was 10, well, let's say it's 100. If our original energy was 100, and we multiply that by two thirds. Multiply that by 0.67, right? What do we get? Yeah, we'll get 67, all right? And now I want you to think, how did we get from 100 to 67? What do we have to lose? Well, we lost, and this is how you do this. You take 100 and you minus it, right, by 67, by the new amount, and what do we get? We get about 33. All right, that's how much we lost. That's how much we decreased, which is our percent decrease. 
all right, because we lost 33%. I'm just using 100 because it's a really nice way to do this example math. Now on test day, what we can do is we can just take this fraction, right, and say, okay, 100% would have been 3 thirds, right, minus 2 thirds. That's going to leave us with a 1 third decrease. So you could also do it that way. I was just giving the example by showing it to you as a sample number. All right, so just recognize that if we got 2 thirds of the original value, what we decreased by was 1 third and that would be A. So I hope this helps. I hope this recognizes that like you do need to practice with what these percentage changes mean. If it said 100% increase, right? What that means is we took our original amount and doubled it. So it'd be 2x, right? So playing around with what these relationships mean can be incredibly helpful for your quick math and your mental math on test day. Making sure, of course, you have the relationships of the equations down are also important, uh, but a lot of students get tripped up about these percent increases and decreases. So I hope this helps. Please feel free to rewatch this video, and as always, happy studying!